Is being called a Korea boo now a negative term? A handful of non-Asian women on TikTok are going viral for being accused of this. Yeah, we got to talk about it because there's a lot of people talking about it. Let's run the clips. We need to remind ourselves what a Korea boo is because apparently now this makeup equals I'm a Korea boo. And this term gets thrown around a lot for a lot of things that are not Korea boo behavior. So real quickly, here are things that do not make you a Korea boo. Liking K-pop. Liking any Korean media. Liking Korean fashion or makeup. Living in Korea. Learning Korean. And these are things that do make you a Korea boo. Everyone defines Korea boo differently, but I think some people are too quick to throw this word around. Personally, I think if you have an interest in another country or culture, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Humanity is about sharing cultures with each other. That's how the world works and that's how society grows and progresses. I think being a Korea boo is when you're only interested in that culture because you want to date those type of people because then that's just shallow. If you respect the culture and have a genuine interest in it and you're willing to take the time to learn things about it, then that's different. If you're- Not to sound like really stupid, but is the Boston Marathon longer than the LA Marathon? No, all marathons are the same length. <laughs> That's like common sense, I fear. Are you serious? I'm serious. So, I was gonna, I was gonna show you. Shut up, it is not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Boom, there you have it, Andrew. A bunch of non-Asian women. I think most of them were white, but this easily could include non-white women. They feel like they are getting disparaging marks from the internet, their family, their friends for being too into South Korean culture. Yeah, but I don't think it's a lot of Asian guys saying that because why would Asian guys be mad that non-Asian women are into Asian culture? But anyways, we'll talk about it, guys, because we have five reasons why you might be accused of being a Korea boo, even when you don't think you are. But uh, David, I mean, I think what are some other things that people got to remember when talking about Korea boo being a term? Is it like otaku? Is it is it just because Korea is very influential? Listen, guys, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, check out Smile Last Sauce at SmileLastSauce.com. This is the definition in the dictionary of Korea boo. It is a disparaging word, a non-Korean person viewed as being obsessed with Korean culture and media. There's videos as far back as seven, almost 10 years ago about right. it. But apparently, here's the thing, Andrew. When it was a term that was mostly used within the Asian world, I felt like it was just used to describe somebody that was obsessed with Korean pop culture. But apparently... Being in a Korean pop culture is becoming so mainstream, it's reaching communities where they think that's bad to be into Korean culture. Right. Well, see, so for me growing up, I did hear weeaboo uh, to describe people who are in a Japanese culture, but mostly it was referring to other Asians that were non-Japanese, like Chinese friends who were just into anime a lot, or right. the first Korea boos I knew were other non-Korean Asians, like Chinese or Vietnamese or Filipinos that were just into Korean stuff. Right, right, right. And basically there used to be an argument over being like, I'm an otaku because I'm moderate or you're a weeaboo because you like are super obsessed with Japanese culture. That right. was the diss. But apparently under the world, the word Koreaboo has reached outside of the Asian world right. and, and taken on a new context. And now it's being used as a derogatory term kind of. Right, so <laughs> point number one, Andrew, PR, did it become derogatory once it reached non-Asian worlds that think liking Asian pop culture is bad? Whereas when it was a word in the Asian world, it was merely descriptive. Yes, yeah. I think that it was more descriptive, non-emotional, had less of a connotation back in the early days. But now... Now that it's a popular term and it's uh, kind of on the mainstream, I guess, at least of the internet, I think a lot of people who are not into the Korean culture or not into Asian culture even are using it just as a negative term to slap on a people as a label, as in you're kind of weird for liking Asian stuff. Oh, what? You like Korean skincare and you watch K-dramas? You're like a weird white person. You're is like it, a weird black person. You're a weird Hispanic is person. Is it almost like being a Western Hemisphere person that embraces like the takeover of the AI robots yeah. or something like that? Because that's not a popular opinion. Yeah, but also I will say this. Terms, any term, any slang term, does not mean what it used to mean 10 years ago. Whether it's ABG, whether it's even the term gangster or gangsta, whatever it is, those meanings have still kind of morphed over time into something a lot more shallow. It used to mean, all these terms used to mean a, something much more specific, but now it's more something broad. But I feel like because Japanese culture never fully breached the mainstream and it sort of stayed in these like geek fishbowls, the meaning of otaku and weeaboo were able to more stay the same. 
perhaps you know what that's a that's an interesting point that you said because I, I feel like a lot of people know about Japanese culture, but I think because there's a sense that to be into Japanese culture, there's very high barriers to entry and you have to try very hard at it, that you have to be, almost be more legitimately into Japanese culture and understand it to actually gain the term otaku or weeaboo. While now, because Korea has so many products out there, you can just have Korean skincare products and listen to K-pop, and then now you're a Karibu. Yes, 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 for sure. I mean, it's it's almost like being in hip-hop is shallow for non-black people, but maybe being into black poetry, like Deaf Poetry Jam, is more in-depth, deep-cut, um, you know, Kendrick to pimp a butterfly. Point number two, reasons can be low-key, uh, they could be envy, or they could be driven by negative feelings. Is Are you saying that this is like negative feelings from people from the Western world? who are like, oh, you're going with the Eastern world. Oh, okay. So here's two, two different people are going to be using it negatively. Let's say it's another Asian person or a Korean person who doesn't like that so many people are getting into Korean culture and then are going to pretend that they're experts and start speaking on Korean culture, and that's going to threaten that Korean person's identity. So people will use Korea boo as a negative term when they feel threatened, but there's two different types of people. One is a Korean person or possibly another Asian person that feels threatened by non-Asians trying to understand and owning Asian culture You're in a way. you they feel some dispossession over the Asian narrative. Yeah, like, like oh, narrative. let me, hey, uh, let me tell you about your own culture type vibe. They don't like that. Now, uh, there's the other person that feels threatened, which is actually a non-Asian person who actually might be a little bit jealous at how much attention Korean culture and Korean people, and I think it's namely when the, when the Korean guys started getting on and being popular and being desired. Nobody was mad about Hyori. No, nobody was mad when Korean women are popular because you just like get it. You're just like, oh yeah, Korean women are hot. Yeah, they're feminine, whatever. They're cute, blah, blah, blah. But now if Korean guys are getting on, I think that it's almost like the same shame. Like, Oh, you're saying that the, the paparazzi were giving stray kids. Oh yeah, you, yeah. I mean like basically non-Asians are kind of sour at the fact that Asians are getting on and that threatens their position. So, so let's say you're a white dude on the internet, not just white guys though, but a white dude or a whatever type of guy who like finds this white woman attractive, but the, you know the white woman is into Korean culture. You might be like, oh, so you're just a Korea boo then. Oh, you just like Korean stuff and you'll try to shame her out. It's kind of like what a lot of like maybe white guys used to do to white women who liked maybe black culture or black guys. And, and I think the reason why this term Korea boo is like popping up in a more disparaging way is because there's starting to be women who look like Sammy learns Korean, this Australian girl. I don't remember girls being Korea boos or wee boos 10 years ago looking like that. You mean looking this attractive is what you mean? I'm just saying that's going to create a lot more jealousy than this other girl. Yes, I'm keeping yes, it real. Yes. No, it I'm is. I'm keeping it real. Yeah. You keep it real. That's real. That's real. Uh, point number four, Andrew. Uh, it's pretty clear that Korea has a lot of soft power right now. I mean, it's probably number one in the world pound for pound, right? Yeah. I would say France has a lot of ancient soft power. Japan is still up there. But pound for pound, South Korea has the most soft power in the entire world. Mm -hmm. It is yeah. punching well above its weight class. For sure. And, 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 you know, I think that not only that... It's that there's so many products. Like, I think Jamaica is a very small place that has a lot of influence, that had a lot of uh, soft power, cultural influence, especially in the 80s and 90s, right? The yeah, whole Rasta. People chewing a Wissam yeah, sticks. Yeah, Bob them. Marley, you know. But the thing is about Jamaica, other than like jerk chicken, uh, which is more of an East Coast thing, like they more eat it uh, in the Jamaica, when in cities that have a Jamaican population like New York. But I'm saying like, there's so many products from Korea. But what about the ganja? It doesn't count. That's it doesn't not, count. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know what I mean? Like you can buy Korean products and now that makes people think you're into Korean culture just because you're buying. It's like saying like back in the day in the 80s right. when Toyota was coming up and you were American and you were like, and I don't know, I'm thinking about getting a Honda or a Toyota. And then people would be like, oh, so you're into that Japanese stuff. No, you, you, want, you want them tin cans? You want them yeah. tin cans? You must love Japanese people and you must love the government because you want the product. Here, I got a song for you. I'm turning Japanese. I'm turning Japanese. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, do you think that they're trying to discourage the enjoyment of South Korean culture or just all Asian culture in general? 
Uh, you know what's funny is that South Korean culture to me it seems pretty palpable to a lot of Americans. So it's pretty American, like actually. yeah, it's not even as different in a weird way. It's not even as weird as like deep cut Chinese culture is. You know, so I could or, or even Japanese culture. Japanese culture is already viewed as more Western than Chinese culture. Yeah. and I think Japanese culture is almost too weird for mass mass consumption. Sure, sure. Uh, you know, my last point of this list is like you know even if David. Some of these girls are fetishizing Korean culture or Asian culture. Let them do it. Why? What's so bad? Like, you know, maybe you fetishize the guys a little bit. That's cool. Let them happen. Like, if fetishizing the Asian men is not the same as fetishizing Asian women. Asian women, hey, you fetishize Asian women, calm down. It's, it can get a little creepy, a little dangerous. But you, you fetishize Asian dudes, we'll tell you the when to stop. The dudes will take it. The we'll tell you when to stop. <laughs> We let us tell you when to stop fetishizing us. Real quick, let's just get into the comment section. Somebody said, if you call Korean men oppa without actually knowing that guy. That's that weird. That's, that's, that's a Korea boo. Come on, you can't go around calling people, people oppa. Saying every East Asian person you know or on an app like YouTube or TikTok or Instagram looks like your favorite Korean idol or actor from a drama that you love. Basically drawing those comparisons. Right, you're saying that these are things that make you a Korea boo, right? That's what these comments are. Right, right, right. Somebody said, people react like that because many... Uh, women are going to Korea because they think Korean guys are handsome and want to go for the same reasons that old white guys go to Thailand for. Uh, Basically saying that people are mad that some women are almost going for sex tourism in South Korea to have sex with Korean regular men. I know that there's romance tourism. I think is, I guess, is it the same thing? Is it like... There's not because they're not paying them, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yes and no. Yeah, it's not the same. Uh, some girl said, "I got called Korea boo because me, my husband of ten years is Chinese." <laughs> okay. See, see, this is when people think they know a term and they think they know a culture, but they don't really know. If you're using the Korea boo to randomly call Asian people. You're skipping steps. You don't even know what Asian they are first. Somebody said, uh, I show, I have a Korean guys on my phone case. And someone in my family said, since you love Korea men so much, huh? you think you're going to marry one? You think you're going to marry one? That's funny. Well, I think, th here's the truth, man. People are not used to, like, from the older Western world, right? Whether we're talking about Latin America West all the way to North America West. They're not used to people having Asian guys on the phone. Yeah. Right. No. Would you agree? That's a new thing. That's like a mind blown for some of the older generation. Yeah. And a lot of having like these Korean guys, like they don't look like necessarily the Korean guys that you find in America as often, you know, they do have a different, more like Asia look. Like if you have BTS on your phone, there's not, there's not that many dudes, even Korean guys in America that just look like BTS on the street. Some are trying to BTS core it out with their outfits, but I but guess it would be the equivalent of like to how some people used to view, and I'm not saying it's to this extent, view David Bowie. Because David Bowie had a very striking look. Right? Sure, sure, sure. Um, this girl said, I was just doing my makeup the other day and someone called me a Karibu. What the F? I'm just trying to exist. Here is a photo of her. Mm -hmm. It does look like she's trying to look Asian though. No, I think, I think you can tell that she's in Asian culture, whether it's Japanese or Korean, but... I don't know. It's just everybody's just calling any girl who seems like she's into a East Asian culture as a Korea boo. Is this just the culture of the internet? You 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 take a uh, an inch and you make it a mile. Right, right. It's like right. it's like oh yeah, this guy's doing this. This I, I like Asian men, but not all Asian men. I don't think I'm a Korea boo. Here's what this girl's TikTok looks like. Right. Somebody said Korea boo. It's simply just a term created or used to discourage dating Asian men. Nobody says being whitewashed and dating white is bad or there have been people in Western civilization or like America who've always wanted to act black to be cool. Yeah, right? you have to understand most of most, and I don't know the statistics, but I would bet that on the internet of any social media account, most of the negative comments are written by some type of dude. I thought you were going to say a white dude. No, no, <laughs> not necessarily a white dude. Could be any other type of guy, but... If you're using Korea Boon in a negative way, you're probably a dude that's not Asian. Well, you're probably a dude <laughs> who feels like you are like 
taking the downside impacts of another type of guy that's not you exactly. being more popular. It right? threatens your place. You feel like it's taking opportunities away from you. Somebody said a lot of Asians move to Paris and wear be berets and eat baguettes. So a lot of Asians are Francophiles. I think a lot of people around the world are Francophiles, maybe just the least in America, to be honest. Even mm -hmm. if you go to Canada, there's mm -hmm. way more Francophiles. And then this last comment, I think they hit it right on the money. They said, I think wanting to be Korean just depends on the range of want on the extremity, on the intensity. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, guys, uh, it's a popular foreign culture right now. Korea is, you know, South Korean culture is very popular and it's foreign and a lot of people in America or people around the world are not used to it. You have to understand, a lot of these TikTok comments, I don't think they're all from America. And in America, there is quite a few Koreans. Uh, America has the second most amount of Koreans outside of Korea, I believe. It has like 2 million Koreans. That's already the most outside of South Korea. Or, I mean, sorry, outside of Asia. So I'm like, I, I think in America, I don't know if the comments are, or, or the comments are coming from bitter guys who feel like these women like Asian guys and they don't want more of their women or non-Asian women to like Asian right. guys because then they think that they lose out on it. But when Korean females were popping... I feel like calling someone a Koreaboo in a shameful way wasn't as big of a deal. It wasn't that popular. So I think it's really because the Korean guys are coming up and, and that threatens people. Right. Uh, you know what another interesting point is that I want to end with is that, you know, there used to be a term Anglophile for people who liked English things, right? Mm. But the Anglo world, Andrew, became so dominant globally, it almost, the word went away and being an Anglophile just became being westernized. Right. Or it just became like the default. But would Anglo or just being like whitewashed or being like what you know what I'm saying? Like I'm saying if you really look at in, in Canada, like in a place like Montreal, there's a battle for the narrative between Francos and Anglos. Those are the French whites and the Anglo whites are trying to battle over what language should be dominant, right? Right. And I'm saying that like from a lot of the world, we just assume that white is Anglo. Mm. Because I'm saying that that's how dominant the culture became. So now that a culture, even though I would say South Korean culture is actually heavily influenced by Anglo culture or, or black Anglo culture, you know what I mean? Black Americans living in an Anglo context. I'm saying that, that it's still so different. Right. It could, because the people look different. So mm -hmm. I think that that's what's creating this bigger deal than you would think. Yeah. Because people have always, like you said, fetishized different cultures from around the world for a long time. Exactly. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Why is it being used as, as a disparaging term um, outside of the Asian world? Is it just a descriptive world in, uh, word in the Asian world? Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time, we the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.